The approach to Sioux Gateway Airport under normal circumstances is a pilot's delight. You cross the Missouri River, past the tip of South Dakota. Nebraska's on your right, on your left, the farmlands of Iowa. As you get closer to the airport, in the fields between the runways, they grow soybeans and corn. It's in one of these cornfields that our story begins. Jack, but uh, this thing's gonna look realistic. I gotta pull a few surprises. Speaking of realistic, it's a great looking wound you got there, buddy. Where's Brown with those ambulances? How come you haven't got those here yet? Sioux Gateway Tower, this is Rescue One. Rescue One, Sioux City Tower. Dan, how much longer can you keep the field closed? Rescue One, stand by air guard operations. Say again. Uh, Sioux City Tower, Bath Squadron has four A7s ready for a live bomb run at Salina. Are we going to be delayed by that circus out there? Negative, Bad Ops. Rescue drill is limited to close runway 2-2. Two, two. Bad 1-1 one, one flight cleared for takeoff. Runway 3-1. Roger that. Bad 1-1 one, one cleared for takeoff. Rescue One, remain in designated area. You have three more hours. 
hours of a lot of times. Thanks, we're going to need that time to clear the casualties. Understand, Rescue One. He already ran out of time. You don't get the injured out faster than that, they're dead. Then it's just a drill. It is always a drill, Chris. simulated a plane crash in a preparedness drill at Sioux Gateway Airport. <laughs> Dozens of Siouxland teenagers volunteered to portray victims. Some of them really got into their parts. I'm sorry. The drill was the first major undertaking of the Woodbury County Disaster Committee, a controversial merger of civil defense, rescue, and medical services. Chairman and organizer Gary Brown had this to say to his critics. Well, I uh, hope we finally proved our point. Uh, when disaster strikes, you don't have time to go to a manual, and that's why we need uh, regular, regular drill and all the possible emergencies that could happen in the Siouxland area. So it appears that in its first major test, Gary Brown's disaster committee has passed with flying colors. Flying colors, my ass. We played with fire up there, didn't he, Bob? Oh, all he did was burn up a rusty old bus. What about that explosion? Oh, you mean that little firecracker he set up? Got your attention, did it? Got the media's attention, too. And he's real good at that. That is part of his job, Jim. If it weren't for Gary, we wouldn't have a preparedness program. Like we needed more bureaucrats. No. But what we don't need is all these old turf battles. Look, we got 85,000 people in this town right now. Now, you've got this airport, but I have got floods, fires, tornadoes, toxic nuclear... It's time we learn new ways. Listen, Chief, when you gave me this crash fire rescue unit at the airport, you didn't say one damn word about me taking orders from some big mouth yuppie. He's just trying to build a team. Team hell. He wants to be a star. Ask anybody. What the hell? <laughs> you mean ask your good old boys. All those public servants that are sitting and counting the time till retirement. Just like you, Bob. Just like you. No. No, I'm different. Uh -huh. I am. I'm just crazy enough to think that change might be good. Yeah, well, that's why they made you chief instead of me. Oh, Jim. You are a better firefighter than I am, but you are a rotten manager. Oh, you got this tail gunner mentality. You're still sitting in the turret of an old Navy plane looking at the world ass backwards. Boom! Tough day at the office, Gary. Not funny. If it had been real, we would have lost a lot of people. General MacArthur would have let the troops know what he was doing. There'll be a post-drill committee meeting on Friday. Written reports. Be there. We had people on seven different channels. None of them was listening to Rescue One. Took us four hours to evacuate the casualties. We don't get those criticals in emergency in the first hour. The game's over. Jeff, you want to... Jeff's from Marion Center. You want to talk about that? Yeah. Well, speaking for Dr. Wolpert, uh, neither Marion Health Center nor St. Luke's Hospital was really tested. I mean, we were prepared to receive 30, and we never got more than one at a time. Mainly, we stood around. We had our Air National Guard volunteers out there on their own time, and they had no ambulances to load, right, sir? Yeah. Drove us nuts. There was a major lack of communication. The, the planning was good. But I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think everybody's playing off the same sheet of music. I agree with Jenny. Uh, Gary, I'm sorry that Jim Hathaway isn't here, and I know he didn't file a written report. But there are a lot of other key leaders of the rescue community who are not here either. Now, that's our real problem. Now, how do you plan to solve that? Give me a minute. I'll think of something. <laughs> Bob, I'm telling you, I know this thing's going to fly. But... Well, you've worked with him for years. You've got to talk to him. Well, if he won't listen to you, why would he listen to me? Come on, just think about it, all right? Listen, i got to go. If I don't take my wife out to dinner, she's going to forget my name. Okay. Carolyn, there's Bye. ice cream in there. Come on, let's go. Babysitter's on the clock. 
Gary, this is sure interesting. What you reading? Your Air National Guard proposal. Does it make any sense to you? Oh, it's great. The Guard needs a larger fire unit than the city can afford. And they're willing to take over the airport fire unit and triple its size. So that's about it. Who'd you have in mind to head this out? Well, that's kind of a political consideration. Come on, let's go. You said you wanted us to be together. This is being together. Okay, what kind do you want? Why don't you make a deal with Jim Hathaway? You support him for the job in return for his pulling his good old friends behind you. Are you in my head? Well, it just seems like the solution to all your problems. Okay. Suppose that's true. How do I approach Jim Hathaway? Like you approach everybody else. Hey, Jim, let's make a deal. No good. He thinks I'm a politician. Well, aren't you? No, I am not. Gary, you sold your program to the whole town. You've got all different kinds of people behind you. Go sell one man. It's different with him. Why? <sighs> Feels like sucking up. I thought you said that was the art of the possible. <laughs> I, I said diplomacy was the art of the possible. Fine, then try that. Where did you learn so much about politics? I sleep with a politician. <laughs> say make a check here well that fire chief before bob hamilton took over he used to come down and chew me up for making x's instead of checks so i quit you come down here to chew me out come down here to talk straight can you read my proposal yeah i got it right here pretty fancy empire for the right man new building new equipment that works a lot more personnel yeah it's just peachy you want the job you trying to bribe me? I can't. The Air Guard will make that choice. But uh, I would work very hard to support you because you are the right man for the job. <laughs> I got that. The snow has fallen early this year. You know, I can't hardly wait to hear what your end of the deal is. What I want is your total and public support of our rescue committee. You mean right or wrong support Gary Brown? No, it means right or wrong support the committee. And then that's a lot to ask. Why? Because I don't trust you, Slick. I think you're in prison for yourself. You really believe that? Or are you just angry because you can't do what I do? Yeah, just what is that? Get along with people I don't like. I don't like you. You don't like me. That doesn't mean we can't do one hell of a job together. I guess I just don't like the way you play the game. Oh, come on. The safety of Sioux City is not a game. You're the best airport fireman in the state, and that's why I want you on my team. You going to work with me or not? Give me that. Hey, Brown. Brown, wait a second. Well, I never said I couldn't try to trust you. Now who's playing games? No games, now. Let's just make a deal. I think you're in business for yourself. You proved me wrong. First time you start playing big shot. Grabbing all the headlines for yourself and forgetting that those... those guys in the trucks are the ones that saved the lives. I am out of here. Okay. But I got some demands of my own. I want your good old boy pals on the committee and taking it serious. I can deal with that. Okay? When I say written reports, that's what I mean. You got a pad? <laughs> what am I, your secretary? You want it or not? First of all, I should be wearing a red suit out there. Red suit? Hamilton doesn't wear a red suit. Yeah, well, Hamilton doesn't know squat about airport fires. It's what we used to do in the Navy. See, air crash survivors are confused. They need an authority figure to come to. Otherwise, they wander around like sheep. Okay, red suit. 
And then uh, we have to get the uh, the city police in gear. They, you know, they don't know how to work with other departments. And then there's the uh, highway patrol. My God, they've got this Wyatt Earp syndrome. Daily cloud of paperwork. This is too pretty a morning to mess around with this stuff. Let's go have a game. Bad three, call base. Yeah. This is bad three. Colonel Swanstrom's compliments, sir. He wants you to be supervisor of flying today because of all the extra personnel on base. Oh, that's great. I was going to get off early today so I could pick up the girls at soccer. Don't worry. I called Linda. She said she'd take care of it. Thanks, Sarge. You're terrific as always. Toss him, Chief. Okay, here you go, Danny. 232, heavy. Contact the tower, 119.5. 232, Roger. We're going to the tower. I got it, Bill. I'll tell you his award. What's that? Little League Volunteer of the Year. He's going to umpire the World Series. Hey, nice going, Skipper. No big deal, Dudley. Thanks, though. Pre-takeoff checklist. Looking good. Denver Tower, this is United 232 Heavy, ready for takeoff. 35 right. 232 Heavy, cleared for takeoff, runway 35 right. And have a good day, sir. Denver Tower, roger that. Cleared for takeoff, runway 35 right. And you have a good one, too. to get your rugged good looks in tomorrow's paper. <laughs> Don't you pull my chain, girl. <laughs> now, is this a social visit, or do you have a problem? Look out your window. What we have here is a summer intern named Sherry Zener. My editor gave her an assignment. An average day with the Sioux City Fire Department. Can I leave her? Okay, guys. Chief's all yours. Oh, Mrs. Poole, how can I ever thank you? Well, just uh, do a good story. And next week, I'll let you parachute into the Rivercade Festival with the Golden Knights. Oh, that sounds exciting. Uh, Marsha, who we got here? Oh, Chief Hamilton, this is Sherry Zener, the summer intern I was telling you about. How do you do? And you know Gary Anderson. Oh, Jim. yeah. He's going to get a Gary. Pulitzer Prize for today's assignment. I'll get even pool, I swear. Have fun. Thanks, Chief. See mm -hmm. you later. So long, Marsha. Well, now, uh, what would you like to see? Bed flight 1-1, one, one, bad ops mobile. You are cleared for gunnery run, Selena range. Be back for tea in two hours, gentlemen, or you'll be running with dry tanks. Roger. See you at 1,600 hours. Want me to take you up sometime? Uh, sure, you want to? Yeah. But you're going to fill out forms. Oh, uh, no. You know, those damn dejection seats scare me to death. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is Bad Mobile. Estimating squadron return at 45. Roger, Bad Mobile return at 1545. Good morning, Heidi. Hi, Gary. Got a repair voucher? Don't ask. The mechanic ought to be paying me for my time. What's next? County Festival people called. They'd like to have a meeting tomorrow at 3.30. Review of emergency procedures. You think maybe they're going to listen this year? I do. I think so. This time they called you Mr. Brown. Oh. Folks, this is Captain Haynes. Here's a little update. We're currently cruising at 37,000 feet, just passing over the town of Alta, Iowa. Estimating arrival in Chicago right on time. The weather along our flight route will be perfect. We hope you're enjoying your lunch. Come in. We're still high on Aloha food. Who wants the ahi tuna? Mahalo. Ball pressure going on two. Two's gone. Shut it up. Number two total stuck out. Okay, emergency shutdown. 
Engine start lever and fire handle to cut off. We're losing hydraulic pressure. We need backup hydraulics. Roger. Backups two and three losing pressure too, Skipper. They must have taken out all the hydraulic lines at once. Is that possible? Well, they all come together back there. Get on the ship with me, will you? I don't know if it's doing any good or not, but it's all we got. You handle the number three throttles too. I can't handle them both. Dudley, what's the manual say? C page I-63. 232 systems maintenance. Understand you have normal power on number one and number three engines. Maintenance 232, affirmative. We need help on loss of all, repeat all hydraulic systems. What do you got, Dudley? Well, I was Main out, main plus back up, Al. It doesn't have anything about all three out. It's not supposed to happen. Minneapolis Center, United 232 Heavy. 232, go ahead. Sir. We have a problem. We have no hydraulic fluid, which means we have no elevator control. Almost none. Very little aileron control. We're trying to steer with throttles only. I have serious doubts about reaching destination. Do you know someplace nearby where we might be able to land? If I don't get control of this airplane soon, I'll have to put her down wherever she happens to be. 232, two, Roger. Stand by one. Uh, you might try flight manual page I-63. I'm on I-63. 232 Heavy, Minneapolis Center. Do you wish to declare an emergency? Yes, sir, that is affirmative. We'd appreciate all the help we can get. Uh, Sue Tower, that flight 11 estimated return 346 local time. Bad leader, Roger. Report 20 miles out. Airport traffic is light. City Tower. Say again. 232 Heavy. Confirming Heavy. Understand the DC 10 Squawking 7700. Roger, standing by. Minneapolis Center gets set for an emergency handoff. DC 10? Yeah. Tail engine blown out, no hydraulics. The only control he's got is right and left throttle. We're bastard circling high. We're looking for a place to land. Do you want to take approach control? No. You do find. I'm right behind you. Better pick up. It's Mark at the comm center. Yeah, Mark. I, I just got a call from Sioux Tower. Get on the loop. I'm on. Understand Sioux City is option one after Des Moines. Is pilot aware of Sioux Gateway's longest runway is 9,000 feet? Sioux City at this time. Pilot is uh, just looking for a home. Roger. Standing by. My God. Rich! Rich! Get the comm trailer out the gateway. I think we got something going on. Heidi, this one's real. 232 Heavy, Minneapolis Center. Can you maintain 31,000, sir? Negative. We're going up and down in waves. 232, understand. Uh, closest facility for heavy aircraft is Des Moines 085 Direct. Can you make that, sir? No, sir. We can only maintain straight or level in short bursts. We're going in this big right-hand spiral, you see? 232 Heavy, understand, sir. Sioux City is your closest airport, but uh, it's a lot smaller facility, sir. We'll take it. 232 Heavy, uh, contact Sioux City approach 124.6, and good luck, sir. Uh, Roger, 124.6. Thanks for your help. I can't get to the radio. I got him. One, two, four, one, six. Any clues from maintenance, Dudley? I think we know more than they do. You better start dumping fuel. Look, fellas, we may not be able to find any runway. I may just have to put this son of a gun down and hope for the best. Come. I'm the DC-10 check pilot. Name's Denny Fitch. You need a hand? Al Haynes. God, am I glad to see you. It, could you go back and eyeball the wings for us first? Yes. There he is. Mm -hmm. Sioux City, 
United 232 Heavy. United 232 Heavy, Sioux City Approach. Uh, Roger, we're in a bit of a rough patch here. You got our squawk? Roger, 232, radar contact, five nine miles. Your present track will put you about eight miles north of the airport, sir. Uh, can you make a slight left turn, sir? Yeah, hope to make some slight left turns on final, but... Right now, we got to make right turns only to whatever heading you want. Roger, 232, heavy. Uh, right turn heading 255. All units, this is Sioux City Tower. We have an alert, too. I say again, alert, two. Get two more guys up here now, please. All rescue units, this is Rescue 1. We have an alert, two. 2300 Ogden, Sioux Gateway Airport. Roll all units. Mount up, Red Dog. They need the pros again. Do I understand a DC-10? Affirmative one. What is that, 200 people? Rescue one, capacity more like 300 and 80,000 pounds of jet fuel. Okay. Okay, we're going to need lots more phone and vehicles. You tell them we'll be ready. Medic one. Chuck, you on? 10-4, standing by. Guys, he can make the airport. You better split half your force north of the field till we know for sure. I'm getting backup units right now. 10-4, we're rolling. Ready to roll. Let's go. City Tower, only option is ejection and no control over where four planes come down. Come. Um, know what the situation is. Let's get both your inboard ailerons are sticking out. That's because we got no hydraulics. Would you get on these throttles here for us? Yes, sir. Put me on the overhead speaker. Overhead speaker. <laughs> Cut back one, up on three. Back one, up on three. And what we really need is some elevator control and I don't know how to get it. Bill, how are the people doing back there? You know, this thing comes that you talked about. Yeah, that's good. Oh, we may have to put this thing down, you know. I need to know. Sioux City, Iowa. That's where we're headed. I can't give any distance or a bearing signal from Sioux Army. It must be shut down. Well, get on number one. Ask them where the hell we are. Dudley, give me a zero flap landing card. Sioux City approach, United 232 heavy. Uh, we're, uh... Turning up the airport. The airport, 232. 232, breaking up. Where is where is the airport to us as we're spinning down here? Down 232, heavy. Sioux City Airport's about 12 o'clock and 36 miles, sir. Thank you, sir. We're trying to hold course, not having much luck. Understand, 232. And when you can, see your souls on board and fuel remaining. We'll get that for you, Sue. We're a little busy right now. They sure didn't come up in my last proficiency check. <laughs> It's uh, it starting to feel a little more comfortable, huh? The lower you get, the thicker the air. Good news, bad news. Tell you what, we'll all have a beer when we get this sucker down. Well, I don't drink, but I'll sure as hell have one on that. Hey, careful. Little right turns. Little right turns, all right. Watch it. I'm trying to hold the altitude. What altitude? 232 heavy. The airport's about 11 o'clock to you now, sir, and 37 miles. 
Roger. We're trying to hold course. Not much luck. Uh, stand by for the souls. There you go. Okay, Sue. We dumped fuel down to 37. Oh, uh, four in the cockpit. That's, uh, 296 souls on board. Uh... 232 heavy copy, 292 souls on board, plus four in the cockpit, and three 7,000 pounds of fuel. Roger, sir. Continue, probe. Attention all units. This is Tri-State Rescue Net. Sue Gateway is now at alert three. Come on, Dave. Let's go. Now I'm to take over. I'm reaching over the ground and all. Thanks a lot, Doug. I got it. I repeat, Sue Gateway is now on alert three. It's a DC-10, 35 miles north. May not be able to make the runway. Well, all units, this is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Center, this is Rescue One. State Patrol is rolling. Air Guard is deployed, and I'm heading out to Gateway right now. 10 4, we're calling all responders, South Dakota and Nebraska. Okay, people, the 3 p.m. shift is in place. Everybody from the morning shift stays and doubles up behind them. Now, you can call home later. Right now, we're going to follow the emergency procedure from all those drills we thought were so corny. We're going to need a lot of IVs spiked and ready. We'll try to get every doctor and nurse on our telephone tree. Well, good luck. And may God be with us. Well, doctor, we've handled six at once, so what's 296? Oh, boy. It's water we need. Get me every tanker within 50 miles. Use the 30 June update list and call those boys at Salix. Come on! The TV truck's going to beat us! You drive, I'll jump out when we get there. So I'm going to have to jump the fence to get any pictures. Now, this is Worthing, South Dakota Volunteer Fire Department. Listen, the boys are down at the ballpark. Uh, I'll have them on the road uh, real fast. Uh, Red Dog, this car 19. It's a Red Dog. I'm out on the highway northeast, doing place. Yeah, we're in our standby position on uh, runway 22. Copy that. Uh, we'll stand by at the gate, because we don't know what you're going to go in at. How many minutes uh, fuel me? Where are your jets? Hold on, check. Ben Mobile, 12 minutes fuel on board. Roger that. Good luck. Good. 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 From uh, Nebraska, South Dakota, Iowa. Good. 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 232, do I understand you don't think you can make Sioux City? Sioux City. Oh, wrong. 232, heavy say again, sir. Okay, we got a little bit more control here now. Sioux City, how long is your runway? United 232 Heavy, the airport, uh, the, the runway is 9,000 feet long. Okay, thank you. We're going to try and put our gear down manually. We think it will help keep our nose down. God, this can give him more control. But that means he's going to have to land on a runway. Well, you never had a choice. You can't belly land a jumbo jet. 232. Okay, we've got the elevators pretty well under control now, within three or four hundred feet. You're not 232 heavy, Roger. Understand, do you have the elevators enough to hold altitude? Negative, we don't have it. We're better, that's all. 232 heavy, there's a small airport about uh, 12 o'clock at seven miles, and the runway's only 4,000 feet. Negative, we'll try for Sioux City. Rescue One, we have to make a commitment here. Where do you want us to deploy? Can he make it to us? Man's a pro. I wish one of you bosses would make a decision. Are we going to blow the whole thing? I say he makes it. All units, this is Rescue One. Get everything you got to the airport right now. I repeat, all units to Sioux Gateway right now. 10-4, coming in. Rescue One, Ida County Comp Center, uh, be advised we are sending 17 medical and 12 fire units. You 
units from Pulse 9 and Ida Grove are bringing their water tankers. Two tower, that squadron overhead 5,000. Uh, 10 minutes fuel on board. I repeat, 10 minutes fuel on board. Uh, Bat leader, stand by. You sure you don't want to take over? No, you're doing fine. Get out of 232 heavy. Sir, you think you can turn 10 degrees and hold a 240 heading? Well, we'll try that. Squeeze up number three. Up on three. So when you get turned to that 240 heading, sir, the airport will be about 12 o'clock and uh, two eight miles. Okay. We'll do our best here. Roger. We'll notify the equipment to move out. Damn, I can't hold it. Let's go around again. 232, two, we've lost the heading. We'll have to continue one more 360 right turn. We'll be back on course here in just a few minutes. Uh, Roger, take all the time you need, sir. Bat Mobile, this is Sioux City Approach. You got three minutes to bring your squadron in. Roger that. Bat Leader, can you expedite best speed landing? Runway 31. Roger, Bat Ops. Bat Squadron, break left. Break left. Advise Bat Leader, turn off the taxiway Lima. Hold short of runway 31 until further notice. Bat Leader, Sioux Tower. Turn off the taxiway Lima and hold short of runway 31 until further notice. Everybody, this is the captain again. I'm not going to lie to you. It's obvious we're in a sticky wicket here, but I want you to know that your crew is going to do one heck of a job. We'll be landing in Sioux City, but we may come down pretty hard, so I want you to listen to everything the flight attendants tell you. We'll probably have to evacuate the aircraft out to touchdown. Okay, the signal for all this will be when I say brace, brace, brace. Stand by and... Good luck to us all. So, we will evacuate. If we can keep the airplane on the runway long enough to stop. All right, let's go find Hathaway. Hey, listen up! You people first team, there's 200 more coming behind you. You get this right, they'll follow your lead. There's 100 backboards set up in Area 4. All the front ranks divided in teams, four people to a litter. Sergeants, count them off. Rest of you move out to Area 5. On the double, move, move! Stay here, the city cops will have your butt in jail. Are you really going over the fence? Yeah, only way to fly. Anderson, who's going to write the story? Well, uh, I'll give your best to Sherry Zener if I run into her. Damn you, Anderson. And that's not fair, Gary. That's my story. Rescue 1, this is car 19. We're coming up on command post. Gary, you got all the rescue vehicles routed here. M4 Bob, they're coming in from all three states. Well, whatever happens, Missy, don't you get out of this truck.
Let's ask him how far out we are. Bill, let's free fall the landing gear now. You're coming down. Sue, where's the airport for 232? You know, the 232, the airport's currently 12 o'clock and uh, 10 more miles. Gear down and locked. Three green lights. 232, heavy. You're going to have to widen out just slightly to your left, sir, uh, to make the turn to final. It also will take you away from the city. Whatever you do, it keeps away from the city. 232, heavy. Can you hold that heading, sir? Yeah, we're holding it now. 232, that heading will put you currently one five miles northeast of the airport. If you can hold that, that'll put you on about a three mile final. Okay, well, give it heck. Baseball games after all. Hey, the rescue, this is Medic One. I've got the airplane in sight at Bronson Blacktop. Uh, approach looking good. Roger. Attention all units. Aircraft is six miles east, descending. It uh, appears he might make it. Uh, you're not at 232. The airport's currently at your one o'clock position, 10 miles. Uh, sir, if you can't make the airport, there's an interstate that runs north to south to the east side of the airport. That's on a four-lane interstate. Roger, Sue. We're just passing it now. We're going to try for the airport. Uh, United 232 Heavy, Roger. Uh, and advise when you do get runway 31 in sight. Where's the, I got the runway. Uh, I don't. This is there. It's back right on there. number one. Back on one. Okay, I see it. Let's try and keep to the center 500 feet away. I see the tower. We have the airport in sight. We'll be with you very shortly. Thanks a lot for your help. Uh, you're not 232 Heavy Roger, sir. Uh, wind 010 at 11. You are clear to land on any runway. You want to be particular and make it a runway? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to make it. Hey, say the wind one more time. Wind 010 at 11. Give me a little left turn. Left turn just a hair. She's slipping. Where's he going? He can't make the turn to 3 1. Hey, he's coming in on 2 2. Uh, sir, that uh, runway is closed. That's 2 2, sir. And if you have to, you can line up on it. Yeah, we're pretty well lined up now. How long is that runway? Uh, you're not 232 heavy. Okay, sir, that, that'll work. Uh, it's 6,600 feet. And the equipment's coming off. Man, both of you guys, clear 22. Get those vehicles off of there right now. Go. You gotta get behind us. Ground control to all personnel. Clear runway 22. Clear runway 22. Coming right at us. No! Looking good, sir. And be advised that there's nothing but open field at the end of the runway, so rollout will not be a problem. 232, Roger. He's the power back now. Left turns. Left turns. Easy. Too fast. Left. You know he's low. Left. 
aircraft on this frequency. Sioux City Airport is now closed. I say again, the field is closed. Facilities maintenance. What is your present location? Sioux City Tower, Sam Gokenauer here. I'm on my way to check the transmitters for damage. I don't have you in sight. Well, I can't see either with all this smoke and vapor. I'm on the access road, back of the corn. Roger, what's it look like out there, Sam? Well, how, how can I tell you if I can't see? This one's gone! This boy's alive! This boy right here! This one's alive! Right off the move. Come and go. Come get you. Here's another one! Come on, get over here! Get over here! Some of these people are still alive! Uh, you'll be all right. I'm all in the water. Take the hand light out of three. Take it around and put it out right over there. See? That's about six. Get that tanker in here. Fly those hand lights. Take just the survivable. Am I survivable? You're right with you, sir. Take my wife, too. Uh, we'll be back from her, sir.
almost there. You're all right. Here. I got him, Sarge. I'll take him over to triage. Thank you, sir. Please, lie still. St. Luke's in 10 minutes. Medic one, medic one, this is triage. I can use some help. KBJ, help coming. Excuse me, sir. Jeff Peterson, sir, acting director of American Red Cross. You gotta be kidding. No, sir, the director's out of town. I was conducting a water safety class. Did you take vital signs? Yes, sir. Well, here's some pressure cuffs. Go help BJ Johnson in the triage area. Take this vehicle right here. On my way, sir. Okay, let's go. You all right? Yes. Fine. Are you okay? Yeah. All right. Broken hour. This is Gary. You called me. What do you need? An ambulance? Hell no. I need a bus. I got about uh, I got about sixty here now, and I'm going back for more. M4. Bus on the way. What else you need? Where the hell have you been? We got here as fast as we can. Here. You were stewardess on this flight? Yes. Are you all right? I think she's fine. Okay, she's how, fine. how are you Just doing? You okay? There. I'm fine. All I'm right. Okay. Just hang on. Hang on a minute. Can I give you a hand, ma'am? My baby. I have to take care of my baby. Ma'am, your baby's fine. Did you need help? Ma'am, can I give your baby to this fine woman here? Huh? Please, let me hold her for you. She's going to okay. be just fine. I'll take care of her. There Come on. There you go, sweetie. All right. Oh, she'll be all right. Clint, can you help this lady? Yep. Help me! Oh, my God, my God. You caused one by yourself, but you've got us a broken ribs. No heart attack. Now listen up. Color's too good, your vitals is fine. What you got is broken ribs. No. Are you too dumb to know the difference between a heart attack and broken ribs? Oh, oh. Come on, get up. Oh, ah. oh this is just broken ribs. You're damn right. Now you head you head for that runway right over there. See? Okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Sergeant. How do you know I'm gonna start again? Ma'am, come on, over here. Oh God. Excuse me, miss. I think I might be hurt a little. I jumped from the plane, you see. Um, car this is car 19. Car 19, I have a survivor here. Could somebody please help? I have a survivor at car 19. It's okay. Somebody's gonna come and help you, okay? No, go ahead. Here. Okay, get out. Uh, all right, medic! Medic! Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move your arm a little bit and get in a better place, all right? It's gonna hurt you just a little bit, but you'll be all right. It's gonna be okay. I think this boy's arm is broken. Yeah. Okay, buddy, we're gonna take care of you. You're gonna be just fine. Thanks, miss. You did real fine. Uh, right, Who are you, anyway? Right, triage area. Roger, be right there. Good shot. 
Colonel, I think it's the cockpit. We have some abrasion burns here, superficial. Dr. My brother okay? What's his name, son? I don't remember. Oh, well, we'll find him. Dr. Dr. Foster. Dr. Foster. Burn room one. There's not much we can do there. Give you your best, Doc. We had to leave his wife behind. Dr. Foster. 
front room too. Massive third degree skin abrasions. Hmm. Looks like he got dragged over the runway. That's when I jump from the airplane, Doctor. You jump from the airplane? Yes, sir. Just before we landed. What's your name, son? Tony Feeney. Well, Tony, that was a very brave thing to do. You don't believe me either. Let's get you fixed up first, then I want you to tell me about it. No, ma'am, you'll have to call the airlines for survivor information. Com Center. Com Center. I really don't care which news media you're with, sir. You're blocking my lines. Com Center. Uh, yes, sir, the blood bank is open and does need you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. Please be patient. We'll get to you. We need you all. We'll give you a ride back to the gate, Jeff. Thanks for coming out. Glad I can help. Hey, Comp Center, this is Medic One. Advise all ambulance units that evacuation is complete and uh, they can return home. And thank them for all of us. 10 4 Chuck, will do. Understand, Red Dog, that you have the situation under control? We'll smolder in all night long, but yeah, she's bucked down. Roger, stand by one. Would anybody care to note the time? I've got 448. That means we've triaged and dispatched 189 people in 46 minutes. Good work, man. Well, it beats four hours. Starting up hangar 15 is a morgue. Is there any change in that procedure? No, no, just like we planned it. Red Dog, those bodies cannot be moved until everything has been tagged and photographed. That means they're going to have to stay out here all night long? I know. I don't like any of the chief. But the investigation team ordered it. We'll put floodlights up and there'll be security around the area. Well, hell, don't you think somebody ought to come out here and say a prayer over them or something? There's clergy on the field right now. Jim, this is Denny. We posted an honor guard all night. That's, um, that's all we can do. Okay, 10-4. Sydney, Australia? Okay, I've got all four of the crew committed, plus the surviving flight attendants. Press going to be all over. Well, we've got them in protected areas. Which which have the names? Uh, far corner, second floor. No, I got the bill records that co pilot them, you see. Well, we thought he was the captain. Well, then where's Haynes? Oh, Hi, Doc. Captain Haynes? Yeah. Evening, Captain Doc. We'll have you situated in a minute. How did this happen? Doctor, I'm sorry. He was so, so undemanding. We didn't know you were the captain. Fine. What do we do about it now? No problem. I've got one corner room left. Take care of it. Right back. In addition to all you've seen on this harrowing day, one image has surfaced and has already come to symbolize the story of this day in Siouxland history. The injured boy has been taken to St. Luke's. A short time ago, Iowa Governor Terry Branstad arrived at Sioux Gateway. Let's go out there. I'm very proud of the way that the Air Guard here in Sioux City responded. I'm very proud of the way that uh, Gary Brown, who's the Director of Disaster Services for Woodbury County, has coordinated this entire effort. It is a big effort. It's something that Skipper, has you made really the, strained the resources of this community. I intend to this morning visit both of the hospitals, the Marion Health Center and St. Luke's.
Chief. Uh, you know, just it was just just a few minutes. I don't know how many lives that damn tank have cost me. It was just a few minutes. Let me tell you something. You saved every life you could today. The rest of them are gone. They're just gone, Jim. That just wasn't good enough. Do you know? I wish we could have saved them all today. But we did the best we could. Why isn't that good enough? I just wanted to know if Daddy was okay. Are you? Uh-uh. I'll see you when I can. I love you, Gary. Heidi, it's me. Uh, listen, I know you have not had any sleep. We've got to get those letters out today. Right, no, they're are more than 50 of them. I want a letter out to every single community that responded. And we've got to set up that meeting with United People. They are flying in from all over the place, and I have got to coordinate that. Right. What? Say again? Uh, one, 186 to the hospital, 110 to the morgue, nine unidentified. Right. <laughs> I guess it is a miracle. It's kind of hard to see with the sun in your eyes. Come on. You're going to sit down. Oh, thanks, Chuck. No, I don't have time to sit down. Well, then you'll make time. This is your doctor talking. Come on. Just beginning to feel it through know what stress you know what it's called as well as i do post-traumatic stress we're all gonna go through it before this is over everybody's gonna need a little therapy and just plain talking to people you love what are you saying i'm flipping out no and i don't want you to take any more meetings no more 5 a.m thank you letters you go home and you sleep for you 12 hours I know you will. I just laced your coffee. Did not. No, but I'll belt you if I have to. Look at all you right, all right. Where did you get your bedside manner? College? No, I was an English major. Medical degrees from Vietnam. How you doing, Chief? Yeah, okay. things, Jim. You're sure as hell right about that red suit. Yeah, you were right too, Gary. We needed a team out there. And by God, we had one.
He might be asleep. Yeah. He's asleep. Boy, he looks so much better than he did a week ago. Oh, when the real miracle was when he brought his big brother in that night. Hey, Brandon, how you doing, buddy? Okay. But I have to share a room with my brother. Yeah. Sometimes in the Air Force, we have to share a room with 50 brothers. Oh, well, my dad is here. He said I won't have to do that back home. Glad your dad is with you, Brandon. Turn up. Spencer, you remember the Colonel? Sure, look. Yeah, he's the one who was in this picture with you. Hmm? Kid, glad to see you again. Can I tell you a secret? Sure. Come closer. My mommy, my mommy died on the plane and I miss her very much. two businessmen. They pop the emergency door before impact and jump. He follows. They're both dead. He lives. You want to believe that? Doesn't matter what I believe. The fireman saw the door open and something flew out. Besides, this man here believes. That's what counts. Tony! Tony, I'd like you to meet Colonel Rick Kelbaugh, commanding officer of the United States Army Parachute Team. The Golden Knights. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. I've seen you jump on TV. Tony Feeney. On behalf of all of us who jump out of airplanes, I wish to name you an honorary golden knight for the most extraordinary free fall that I have ever heard of. Airborne. Airborne, sir. Now that's a picture, kid. Dear. Yeah. Sir, uh, my name's Chris Porter, and I was... Uh, I'd know that voice anywhere. <laughs> Sit down. Sit down. Did you meet my wife? Yes. I'll leave you two alone for a minute. Thank you, ma'am. Well, sir, you look real good. I tell you, it sure beats rigor mortis. <laughs> uh, I've read in the paper that United put your flight track up on their Denver simulator. Uh, a lot of senior pilots tried to land the planes. So far, nobody's gotten within 10 miles of the airport. Well, they didn't have you talking them down. I uh, had a lot of help. But you have no idea what your calm voice meant to us up there. Well, Captain, I, I really think I might have done a better job. Join the club. Listen, Chris. Of all the places in America we could have landed, I thank God it was here. I intend to tell that to every man, woman, and child in this city. I have to come back here a hundred times. Honey, it's time to leave.
city. Today, its disaster preparedness program is cited as a model for cities around the world. This film is dedicated to those who died, those who survived, and those who prepared. Mm -hmm. 